In the heart of the Atlantic, a team of deep-sea miners operated on the ocean floor, scouring for rare minerals. Led by Captain Harold, a seasoned veteran of undersea expeditions, the team piloted their advanced mining rig, the Neptune, through the dark, pressure-laden depths. The crew, a mix of seasoned miners and bright-eyed scientists, worked tirelessly, driven by the promise of discovery and the thrill of unearthing the ocean's secrets. On a routine excavation day, the team's sonar picked up an anomaly, something that defied the usual geological patterns. It was a structure, not formed by nature, but unmistakably artificial. Intrigued, they maneuvered the Neptune closer, its powerful lights piercing the abyssal darkness. What they found was beyond their wildest imaginations. Buried beneath centuries of sediment and coral growth lay an object of unmistakable alien origin. It was a monolithic structure, its surfaces etched with strange symbols and geometric patterns. The artifact, which the crew promptly named Inferno's Vault, emitted a faint, pulsating glow, hinting at some dormant power within. The team, particularly the scientists led by Jane, a marine biologist, was abuzz with excitement. This discovery could be the key to untold advancements in technology and knowledge. Captain Harold, although cautious, shared their enthusiasm. A decision was made. They would excavate Inferno's vault and bring it aboard the Neptune. As they worked to free the artifact from its ancient resting place, they couldn't shake off a feeling of unease. The vault seemed to hum with a life of its own, its glow intensifying as it was disturbed. The ocean around them felt heavier, as if they had awakened something that had been slumbering in the deep for eons. Finally, as the vault was secured within the Neptune's hold, a sense of accomplishment washed over the team. They were oblivious to the fact that they had just unlocked a force beyond their understanding, a force that would soon manifest in ways they couldn't possibly foresee. As the Neptune began its ascent to the surface, with Inferno's vault nestled within its belly, the artifact's glow became more pronounced, casting eerie shadows across the walls of the hold. The team looked on in a mix of awe and apprehension, unaware that their greatest challenge lay not in unearthing this alien relic, but in the consequences that would follow its awakening. As the Neptune ascended with its unearthly cargo, the crew began to notice subtle, unsettling changes in their environment. The first signs were almost imperceptible, mere anomalies in the daily routine of deep-sea mining. Fish that swam too close to the rig exhibited erratic behaviour, their movements jerky and unnatural. Schools of deep-sea creatures, once indifferent to the Neptune's presence, now kept a cautious distance. Jane, the team's biologist, was the first to voice concern. While analysing samples of marine life, she discovered alarming genetic deviations. The DNA structures of even the simplest organisms showed signs of rapid, unexplainable mutation. Her reports, filled with scientific concern, circulated among the crew, seeding a growing unease. The situation escalated rapidly. What started as curiosity turned into alarm when a routine excursion outside the Neptune was interrupted by a harrowing encounter. A team of divers, led by Alex, ventured out to inspect the rig's exterior. Amidst the silent darkness, they came face to face with the unimaginable. A creature, grotesquely mutated, emerged from the gloom. Its form was a nightmarish blend of familiar marine features, twisted into something alien. Bioluminescent tendrils flickered around its maw, and its eyes, if they could be called that, glowed with a malevolent intelligence. The divers, frozen in terror, could only watch as the creature circled them, its movements suggesting a curious intelligence. Alex, gathering his courage, signalled the team to slowly retreat to the Neptune. The creature followed, its movements deliberate, as if understanding their intent to escape. In a moment fraught with tension, the creature lunged. Its jaws snapped shut inches from Alex's diving suit, the sound echoing through the water. Adrenaline surged and the team made a desperate dash for the safety of the Neptune. The creature pursued, its speed astonishing, but as they neared the rig, 
It veered away, disappearing into the dark abyss. Inside the Neptune, the crew caught their breath, their minds racing to comprehend what had just occurred. The reality of their situation was undeniable. The extraction of Inferno's vault had unleashed something terrible upon the depths. The mutated creature was just the beginning, a harbinger of the nightmare that was to unfold. The crew, once confident in their dominion over the ocean's secrets, now faced a threat that defied explanation, a threat that lurked in the very waters they had sought to conquer. The atmosphere aboard the Neptune grew increasingly tense following the encounter with the mutated creature. The crew, already on edge, faced a new horror, one that hit disturbingly close to home. It began subtly with Alex, one of the miners who had first encountered the mutated creature outside the rig. He complained about his diving suit feeling unusually tight, almost constrictive. Initially dismissed as a minor equipment malfunction, the situation quickly escalated into something far more horrifying. Over the course of mere hours, Alex's suit began to undergo a grotesque transformation. The high-tech fabric, designed to withstand extreme pressures, started to merge with his flesh. The fusion was gradual yet relentless. Veins of the suit's material crept across his skin like a living entity, integrating with his body. The medical team, led by Dr. Annie, worked frantically to understand and reverse the process, but it was beyond any medical science they knew. Alex's body and the suit became indistinguishable, morphing him into a grotesque hybrid of man and machine. His humanity was being consumed by the very technology that was supposed to protect him. As the final stages of the transformation took hold, Alex's human features were almost entirely obscured. Where there had once been a man, there now stood a biomechanical entity, his identity lost to this unnatural fusion. His eyes, once expressive and human, were now cold and mechanical, emitting a faint glow reminiscent of the artifact's pulsating light. The crew watched in horror, realizing the full extent of the nightmare they had unleashed. This biomechanical fusion was not just a freak occurrence, it was a clear indication that the artifact's influence was far more invasive and dangerous than they had imagined. Alex, now more machine than man, stood as a grim testament to the artifact's power. His transformation marked a turning point for the crew of the Neptune. What had started as a groundbreaking expedition had spiraled into a fight for survival against forces they could barely comprehend. In the wake of the biomechanical fusion incident, fear gripped the crew of the Neptune. With the growing threat from the mutated marine creatures, a sense of urgency took hold. The facility, once a hub of scientific discovery and mining operations, now transformed into a fortress at the bottom of the sea. Captain Harold, alongside the security team, spearheaded the efforts to fortify the facility. Every possible entry point was reinforced, surveillance systems were recalibrated for maximum efficiency, and emergency protocols were revisited. The team worked tirelessly, understanding that their survival depended on the strength of these defences. Jane, despite her own fears, helped in devising strategies to repel the creatures, drawing on her biological expertise. Her insights into the creatures' possible behaviours and weaknesses were invaluable. The crew, though anxious, rallied behind their leaders, their resolve hardening but nothing could have prepared them for the scale and intelligence of the assault that followed. As the creatures emerged from the dark waters, it became chillingly clear that they were not acting on mere instinct. They displayed terrifying intelligence and coordination, attacking the facility's weak points with strategic precision. The Neptune's advanced defense mechanisms, designed to deter human threats and withstand environmental hazards, were ill-equipped to handle this kind of coordinated assault. The crew watched in horror as the outer cameras relayed live footage of the siege. The creatures, some massive and others small but numerous, worked in unison to breach the facility's defences. Their terrifying forms, illuminated by the facility's lights, were a nightmarish sight. Despite the crew's valiant efforts, the facility's outer barriers began to falter. 
The reinforced glass and metal groaned under the relentless assault. Then, with a deafening crack, the first breach occurred. Water gushed in, carrying with it the monstrous invaders. Panic ensued as the crew scrambled to seal off sections of the facility. Alarms blared, and the once-controlled environment of the Neptune descended into chaos. The creatures, having gained entry, moved through the corridors with eerie purpose. In the aftermath of the facility's breach, the crew of the Neptune struggled to comprehend the magnitude of the crisis they faced. Among them, Jane, the biologist, began to experience changes that would add another layer of complexity to their dire situation. Initially, Jane dismissed her symptoms as stress-related. However, it became impossible to ignore the subtle yet unmistakable alterations in her physiology. Her skin developed a slight bioluminescent sheen, reminiscent of some deep-sea creatures. Her fingers elongated, her nails hardening and taking on a more claw-like appearance. Despite her scientific mind urging her to remain calm, fear crept into her thoughts. Concerned for her well-being, Jane confined herself to the lab, conducting tests and analyses on her own blood samples. The results were as fascinating as they were terrifying. Her DNA showed signs of rapid mutation, a pattern similar to what she had observed in the marine life affected by the artifact. As she grappled with her transformation, Jane made a startling discovery. She found herself increasingly attuned to the mutated creatures that now roamed the facility. It started with an unexplained awareness of their presence, a sense that she could almost feel their thoughts and intentions. Driven by scientific curiosity and a desperate need to find a solution to their predicament, Jane attempted to communicate with the creatures. Using a combination of sounds and gestures, she engaged with one of the less aggressive mutated beings that had infiltrated the facility. To the astonishment of the crew who witnessed this interaction, the creature responded. There was a clear, if primitive, exchange of information. Jane, her voice a mix of awe and fear, explained that she could understand the creature's basic desires and fears. It was a breakthrough, albeit a deeply unsettling one. This development sent ripples of shock and intrigue through the Neptune's crew. Jane's ability to communicate with the creatures opened up new possibilities for understanding and perhaps negotiating with their new adversaries. However, it also raised profound questions about the nature of the artifact's influence and the future of their own humanity. As Jane continued to change, both physically and mentally, the crew's dynamics shifted. Fear mingled with hope the horror of their situation tempered by the potential of this unprecedented connection. Jane, once a scientist observing the natural world, was now a bridge between humanity and the unknown. Standing at the crossroads of an evolutionary leap that defied the laws of nature as they knew it. As the siege of mutated creatures continued and Jane's transformation progressed, a more insidious threat began to manifest aboard the Neptune. The crew, already grappling with unprecedented physical dangers, now faced a creeping psychological menace. The deep sea, a realm of perpetual darkness and crushing pressure, had always posed a challenge to the human psyche. But now, influenced by the alien artifact's mysterious energy, the environment took on a more malevolent aspect. The crew members, isolated from the surface world and trapped in an underwater nightmare, started showing signs of severe psychological strain. Whispers of paranoia echoed through the corridors. Sleep became elusive for many, their dreams haunted by visions of the deep and the horrors it concealed. The once disciplined and cohesive team began to fray at the edges, their interactions tinged with suspicion and fear. Mike, one of the engineers, was hit hardest by this psychological onslaught. Known for his jovial nature and resilience, the change in him was stark and distressing. He became withdrawn, his usual banter replaced by long periods of silence. When he did speak, his words were laced with confusion and fear, often mumbling about shadows in the water and voices in the pipes. His descent into madness reached its peak one fateful night. The crew awoke to the sound of alarms blaring, 
Mike had sabotaged part of the facility's life support system. When confronted, he was incoherent, raving about needing to free them from the grasp of the deep. The situation spiralled quickly. Mike, driven by his delusions, became violent, forcing the security team to intervene. The confrontation was tense and chaotic, ending with Mike being restrained, his eyes wide with an unhinged terror. This incident shook the crew to their core. It was a stark illustration of the depth of their plight, a reminder that the dangers they faced were not only physical, but also mental. In the confines of the Neptune, besieged by horrors both external and internal, the boundaries of their sanity were being tested like never before. Mike's breakdown served as a grim warning of what could befall any of them if the situation didn't improve. It underscored the urgency of finding a way to counter the artifact's influence and escape the crushing embrace of the deep sea, a place where not just bodies, but minds too, were under siege. Amidst the escalating crisis aboard the Neptune, a discovery in the depths of the facility offered a grim insight into their predicament. In a neglected storage room, tucked away in a rusting cabinet, the crew found a collection of old expedition logs. The logs, water-stained and aged, belonged to a previous deep-sea exploration team that had mysteriously vanished years ago. The crew gathered, their attention fixed on Captain Harold as he carefully leafed through the brittle pages. The logs detailed an expedition eerily similar to their own, with descriptions of strange artifacts and unexplained phenomena in the deep sea. As they delved deeper into the entries, the parallels became increasingly disturbing. The previous team had also encountered mutated marine life, described in the logs with a mix of scientific fascination and growing horror. Sketches of grotesque creatures filled the margins, alongside frantic notes speculating about their origins and behaviour. As the entries progressed, the tone shifted from scientific curiosity to palpable fear. The team had experienced unexplained equipment malfunctions and bizarre psychological effects, mirroring the current crew's struggles. Hints of paranoia and desperation seeped through the words, painting a picture of a team pushed to the brink. The final entries were the most chilling. They spoke of a dark presence in the deep, an overwhelming force that seemed to emanate from an unearthed artifact. The writer's hand grew increasingly erratic, the words tinged with madness. Then, abruptly, the logs ended. The last page was half-filled, the sentence cut off mid-thought, as if the writer had been suddenly interrupted or taken. The absence of a conclusion left a haunting silence among the Neptune's crew. This grim find deepened the mystery surrounding their situation and offered a dire warning. The fate of the previous expedition loomed over them, a ghostly echo of what could be their own future if they failed to understand and overcome the forces at play. The lost expedition logs, now a part of the Neptune's own troubled story, served as a stark reminder of the ocean's unfathomable secrets and the peril of delving too greedily into its hidden depths. For the crew, it solidified the reality of their situation. They were not just battling for survival against unknown horrors, but also against the possibility of being lost and forgotten, swallowed by the depths, just like those who had come before them. In the shadow of the harrowing discoveries and relentless threats, the crew of the Neptune stumbled upon yet another unsettling truth. As they sifted through the facility's digital archives in a desperate search for any information that might aid their survival, they uncovered a series of encrypted communications. The contents, once decrypted, revealed a web of deceit that extended far beyond the confines of their underwater nightmare. The communications detailed clandestine dealings between the expedition's backers and a shadowy black market syndicate. It became clear that the primary motivation behind the Neptune's mission was not scientific discovery or resource mining, but the acquisition of alien artifacts for illicit purposes. This revelation sent shockwaves through the already beleaguered crew. Feelings of betrayal and anger simmered to the surface. 
Captain Harold, who had always prided himself on leading a mission of exploration and discovery, felt the sting of this deceit most acutely. He had been a pawn in a dangerous game, his crew's lives put at risk for the greed of unseen masters. The trust that had bound the crew, already frayed by the horrors they had faced, began to unravel further. Heated arguments broke out, with accusations and recriminations echoing through the cramped corridors of the Neptune. The scientists, including Jane, grappled with the ethical implications of their work, now tainted by the shadow of illegality. As the reality of their situation sank in, the crew's unity fractured. Questions arose that had no easy answers. Who exactly were they working for? What was the true nature of the artifact they had unearthed? And most importantly, what would their unseen benefactors do to protect their investment? In the face of an external nightmare, the crew now confronted an internal one. The erosion of trust and the corrosive influence of lies. The revelation of the black market deal added a new layer of danger to their predicament, turning the struggle for survival into a battle against both the monsters outside and the demons within. The Neptune's crew, already reeling from the revelations about their mission's true nature and the relentless onslaught of mutated creatures, faced a new and unexpected threat from the ocean's depths. Their exploration of the surrounding area, a desperate attempt to find a solution to their predicament, brought to light a startling transformation in the undersea ecosystem. As they navigated the murky waters around the facility, the crew observed that the local flora had undergone grotesque mutations similar to the fauna. The seafloor, once home to a variety of aquatic plants, now resembled a twisted alien landscape. Towering kelp with razor-sharp edges, anemones with predatory movements, and coral structures pulsating with an eerie luminescence formed a surreal and menacing tableau. This bizarre metamorphosis of the underwater flora was not just a passive change in appearance. The plants exhibited aggressive and predatory behaviors, a stark deviation from their normal characteristics. A reconnaissance team including Jane and a group of divers, experienced this firsthand during a survey mission. As they collected samples near a particularly dense thicket of mutated kelp, the plants sprang to life, their movements swift and coordinated. The team found themselves entangled in the kelp's grasp, the once benign plants now constricting like pythons. Panic ensued as they struggled to free themselves, their diving knives barely effective against the tough, fibrous tendrils. In a desperate bid for survival, one of the divers used a flare gun, igniting a section of the mutated kelp. The flames, an anomaly in the underwater world, caused the plants to recoil, releasing their captives. The team hastily retreated back to the Neptune, their mission abandoned, their minds reeling from yet another brush with death. This encounter with the mutated flora marked a turning point in the crew's understanding of the artifact's influence. It was not just altering individual creatures, it was reshaping the very fabric of the ocean's ecosystem, turning it into a hostile environment, alien and deadly. The surreal landscape of mutated plants that now surrounded the Neptune served as a grim reminder of the pervasive and insidious nature of the artifact's power. For the crew, the once familiar ocean depths had become an alien world, hostile and unpredictable, where every foray outside the safety of their facility was a journey into the unknown. With the situation aboard the Neptune deteriorating rapidly, Captain Harold called for an emergency meeting. The relentless attacks by the mutated creatures, the mental strain, and the discovery of the mission's true nature had taken their toll. The decision was unanimous and grim. It was time to evacuate the facility and abandon the mission. The Neptune was equipped with emergency escape pods, designed to swiftly transport the crew to the surface in case of a catastrophic event. These pods were their last hope, a means to escape the underwater nightmare that had claimed their once promising expedition. The crew set about preparing for evacuation with a sense of urgency but also with heavy hearts. 
Leaving the Neptune meant abandoning their colleagues who had succumbed to the horrors of the deep and acknowledging that their mission had ended in failure and tragedy. However, their plan to escape was dealt a crippling blow. As they initiated the launch sequence for the escape pods, they encountered a series of system failures. Confusion and panic spread as they tried to diagnose the issue. Their worst fears were confirmed when Alex, now more machine than man due to his biomechanical fusion, discovered evidence of sabotage. The escape pod's control systems had been deliberately tampered with, their mechanisms rendered inoperable. This was no random malfunction. It was a calculated act to trap them in the depths. The revelation that they were intentionally marooned at the bottom of the ocean was a devastating blow to the already demoralized crew. Accusations and suspicions erupted as they grappled with the reality of their entrapment. Someone among them was responsible, but who and for what purpose remained unknown. This act of sabotage shattered the last vestiges of hope and trust within the crew. Surrounded by the mutated horrors of the deep and betrayed by one of their own, the crew faced the grim reality. They were trapped, with no apparent way out, at the mercy of the dark forces that lurked in the ocean's abyss. As the crew of the Neptune grappled with the shock of their sabotaged escape and the mounting horrors outside, a new development surfaced, adding another layer of complexity to their dire situation. Without warning, a covert military unit arrived at the facility, their presence unannounced and their intentions enigmatic. The unit, clad in high-tech diving gear and armed with advanced weaponry, made their way into the heart of the Neptune. Their arrival was met with a mix of relief and apprehension by the beleaguered crew. Captain Harold demanded answers, but the unit's commander, a stern figure known only as Major Stevens, remained tight-lipped about their mission. It soon became evident that their primary objective was the alien artifact, Inferno's Vault. The military's interest in the artifact suggested its significance extended far beyond scientific curiosity. It was an object of power, coveted by forces beyond the simple mining operation the crew had believed they were part of. As the military unit moved to secure the artifact, they encountered resistance not from the crew, but from the mutated creatures that had overrun the facility. A fierce battle ensued, showcasing the military's advanced combat capabilities. Their weapons, unlike any the crew had seen, were effective against the mutations, turning the corridors of the Neptune into a war zone. The crew watched in a mix of awe and horror as the military engaged with the creatures. The facility, already damaged from the ongoing siege, shook with the force of the conflict. It was a clash of titans, human technology pitted against the monstrous products of an unknown alien influence. Despite their advanced weaponry, the military unit soon realized the extent of the challenge they faced. The creatures, seemingly driven by a singular purpose, fought with relentless ferocity. The battle reached a stalemate, with neither side able to gain the upper hand. This confrontation with the military brought a new reality to the fore. The crew of the Neptune were caught in the middle of a conflict that spanned far beyond their initial mission. The arrival of the military unit, with their clear intent to claim the artifact at all costs, signalled a shift in the struggle for survival. It was no longer just a fight against the mutated horrors of the deep, but a battle entangled in the shadowy webs of military power and the insatiable hunger for control over an unearthly force. In the midst of the chaotic standoff between the military unit and the Neptune crew, an ominous shift occurred in the behavior of the mutated creatures. This change would unite the two human factions against a common and overwhelming threat. Jane, whose own mutations had deepened her connection to the creatures, was the first to sense the shift. She felt a resonating presence, an emergent consciousness that was linking the creatures in a complex, organized network. This was no random mutation. It was the birth of a biological hive mind, the creatures, once acting on individual instinct, now moved with purpose and coordination, displaying a terrifying collective intelligence. Their assaults on the facility became more strategic, 
targeting key systems and defenses with unnerving precision. This new development forced the crew and the military to form a reluctant alliance. Their survival now depended on their ability to repel a unified and formidable enemy. The corridors of the Neptune echoed with the sounds of battle as humans and creatures clashed in a desperate struggle for dominance. The turning point came when the creatures launched a massive, coordinated attack. They struck simultaneously from multiple points, overwhelming the facility's already compromised defences. The Neptune's structural integrity buckled under the onslaught, causing sections to flood and critical systems to fail. The situation rapidly descended into chaos. The crew and military fought side by side, but the creatures, driven by the singular will of the hive mind, were relentless. The facility now resembled a besieged fortress, its halls filled with the sounds of combat, the cries of the wounded, and the relentless advance of the mutated horde. As the creatures surged through the facility, the reality of the situation became clear. This was no longer a battle they could win by force alone. The emergence of the hive mind had changed the rules of the game, transforming the mutated creatures into an organized and unstoppable force. For the crew of the Neptune and their unexpected military allies, survival now hinged on finding a way to disrupt the hive mind and turn the tide of this underwater war. As the battle against the hive-minded creatures raged within the Neptune, a new and terrifying threat emerged from the abyss. Drawn by the pulsating energy of Inferno's vault, a colossal mutated creature, unlike any the crew had encountered, approached the facility. Its sheer size and menacing presence signaled an impending catastrophe. The creature, a leviathan of the deep, dwarfed the Neptune with its gargantuan form. Its body, a horrifying amalgamation of various marine life, pulsed with bioluminescent light, casting an eerie glow in the dark waters. Its approach sent shockwaves through the facility, the very ocean seeming to tremble in its wake. Jane, now deeply attuned to the creatures, felt an overwhelming surge of energy emanating from the Leviathan. It was not just another mutated being, it was the apex of the underwater transformation, a titan of the deep drawn to the source of the profound changes rippling through the ocean. As the Leviathan neared the Neptune, its intentions became clear. It was not just an observer, it was an aggressor, intent on reaching the artifact. The facility's exterior defences, already battered by the ongoing assaults, stood little chance against the immense power of the creature. The clash that followed was cataclysmic. The Leviathan attacked with brute force, its massive limbs and tendrils smashing against the facility's hull. The impact of each blow was like a detonation, shaking the Neptune to its core. Windows cracked, metal groaned, and water began to seep into the already compromised structure. Inside, the crew and the military unit fought desperately to maintain the integrity of the facility, but it was a losing battle. The Leviathan's relentless assault tore gaping holes in the Neptune, allowing water and smaller mutated creatures to flood in. The situation inside the Neptune became desperate. Corridors and compartments filled with water, equipment short-circuited, and the lights flickered erratically, casting haunting shadows. The crew scrambled to find higher ground within the facility, evading both the invading water and the onslaught of creatures. In the midst of this chaos, the Leviathan continued its unyielding attack, each strike bringing the Neptune closer to total destruction. The once proud deep-sea facility, a marvel of human engineering, was being reduced to a crumbling wreck. Testament to the untamed power of the deep and the unforeseen consequences of meddling with forces beyond human understanding. As the Neptune teetered on the brink of destruction under the Leviathan's assault, a sudden and profound change occurred. From the depths of the ocean, a new entity emerged, distinct from the chaos that had engulfed the facility. This being an ancient alien guardian had been awakened by the turmoil surrounding Inferno's vault. The Guardian, a colossal entity embodying both the mystery and majesty of the deep sea, 
radiated a power that dwarfed even that of the Leviathan. Its form was ethereal, composed of shimmering, translucent material that seemed to blend with the water around it. Its arrival initially sparked fear among the crew, who perceived it as yet another threat in a series of escalating dangers. However, as the Guardian approached the Neptune and the battling creatures, its purpose became clear. It moved with deliberate grace, interposing itself between the Leviathan and the facility. A sense of calm authority emanated from the Guardian, a stark contrast to the chaotic violence that had dominated the ocean depths. Jane, her connection to the mutated marine life now reaching a profound level, felt a powerful resonance with the Guardian. Through a combination of her mutated senses and the intuitive understanding she had developed, she communicated with the enigmatic being. In this exchange, a startling revelation came to light. The Guardian was not a harbinger of destruction, but a protector, tasked with containing the immense and volatile power of Inferno's vault. It had been awakened by the artifact's disturbance, sensing the danger it posed not only to the ocean, but to the world above. The Guardian conveyed an urgent message. The artifact must be returned to its resting place, sealed away to prevent the cataclysmic energy from wreaking havoc on a global scale. Jane relayed this message to the crew and the military unit, imploring them to put aside their conflicts and unite in this critical mission. In a dramatic turn of events, the once adversarial factions aboard the Neptune came together, guided by the Guardian's wisdom. The Leviathan, recognizing the authority of the Guardian, ceased its attack and receded into the depths, along with the other mutated creatures. The crew, with the help of the military unit, worked to secure the artifact, preparing to return it to its rightful place. The Guardian, its presence a calming influence, led the way, navigating through the dark waters. As they journeyed to the artifact's resting place, a sense of solemnity and purpose united the crew. They were no longer mere survivors of a deep-sea disaster. They were participants in a mission of cosmic importance, entrusted with the safety of their planet. Upon reaching the site, the artifact was carefully returned to its vault. As it settled into place, the Guardian's form began to fade, its task fulfilled. The ocean around them grew calm, the eerie light of the artifact dimming until it was once again enveloped in darkness. The Guardian's disappearance marked the end of the ordeal. The Neptune's crew and their unexpected allies watched in silence, a mixture of relief and awe in their eyes. They had faced the abyss and emerged not only alive but as guardians themselves, keepers of a secret that lay hidden in the depths, a reminder of the delicate balance between human curiosity and the unfathomable mysteries of the universe.